Hi, I'm David Lawrence, founder and CEO of the Mission Gate Foundation. In this video, we're gonna be talking about fitting the AFO, or ankle foot orthoses, to the individual. So, in this case, we're talking about a carbon AFO, but what I wanna do before I actually put a brace on somebody is talk to them about or introduce them to the brace and introduce them to the expectations. That's both benefits and limitations. So in carbon fiber, the benefit is very, very light, very, very thin, and when you bend it, it's gonna give you return or energy back. So we want patients to understand that. Also means though, inside your shoe, it's gonna take up a little bit of space. It is gonna be a, a kind of a rigid uh, plate. So using an insert over top of it is always more comfortable and making sure that your shoe has enough room to do that. And that the brace is going again, give you energy back, but also can be pushing you into hyperextension. This brace being a coil brace is gonna give us a lot of return, but not so much pressure into extension. But if the patient has an issue where that knee wants to hyperextend, we have to be careful, does the brace cause that or, or cause more of that? So to start with, we wanna look at how do we don and doff this device? How do we put it on correctly? I always wanna do that myself the first time. This came from the orthodist, so it should be fit to the patient, but I just wanna double check that things are right. Is the foot plate the right size? Are we strapping it on in the correct position? Does it fit inside the shoes? Are the shoes the right shoes for the individual? So I'm gonna put it on the patient to start with. To do that, first of all, these are simply Velcro closure like most, so we're gonna simply open it up. I'm gonna take his shoe, use the insert that he has in the shoe, and the first thing I will do is right off the bat is put that insert on top of the plate and look and generally, do we have the right size? Have we got the alignment, the general alignment or length right? If it is, we slide those two together. Always the best way to do it on this type of brace is to put them in the shoe and then fit the shoe onto the patient. So from here, what we're gonna do is put this guy into position, pick that foot up, bring it in front of the brace, and slide down in. Now, gotta remember that those toes may want to curl up, so you're gonna take your time and make sure that you don't force the foot in there. You give that foot a little bit of time to slide down in, keep pulling the tongue up until you feel that device, there we go, slide past. There you go, just straight down in. That's it, nice and easy. Now, this is a bit of a softer shoe. That means on the back the strap is going to fold over a lot easier, a little bit harder to don. What this patient likes, but it's not the easiest shoe to put on. Once it's there, I'm simply gonna take up the slack. I don't wanna make the shoe super tight. Just take up the slack. And as far as Velcro closure, same issue. I wanna pinch the brace a little bit at to the top just to take up the slack in it and wrap it around. I don't wanna cinch it like a tourniquet effect, but I do wanna make sure that I have a good snug fit. So there, I'm gonna take a look at it, make sure that where the bars are, there's nothing catching or pinching on the patient. There's no pressure into the arch or problem where I can see a rub. Now, nothing in sitting. Generally, the length looks okay. So at this point, I'm gonna have the patient stand up. And if you do, just go ahead and keep your hands on the parallel bars and stand up. Excellent. We're gonna step forward just a touch. That's it, keep that knee kind of a soft knee. That means he's not gonna hyperextend the knee, but also not bend it. Just kind of keep it in a position just slightly short of fully straight. And go ahead and put all your weight right on it. And again, I wanna look, are there pressure areas? Anything where I can see, it could put a mark on his skin or cause him an issue. I also want to check my length. My length looks good. He has plenty of extra shoe to fit in there. And if he gets all the way in and we've got room, there's no pressure areas, he's not feeling any pressure areas, I know I have a pretty good fit. So from there, I'm going to have you sit down. And many times at this point, the patient would be told, okay, you're good, you can take the brace, it fits you. But the issue there is that the patient doesn't know how to put the brace on themselves. So I really want the patient to understand this and get the sense of how do you do this yourself.
So as you can see, that's not easy. That is a process that you have to go through. And you have to go through multiple times with the patient. And again, the patient may need help with that. So that process will occur multiple times until they feel like they can do it and they comfortably can do it at home. But we're not done. At this point, what we need to do is provide the patient with a wearing schedule. Talk to them about wearing this device on, the, on their leg may feel great right when they get started. Hey, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, and go walk all day and end up with a lot of irritation, skin breakdown, rubbing spots, or just soreness, soreness in the knee or soreness in the leg because you're putting more weight on it than you're used to. So what we wanna do is talk to a patient about saying, a couple hours on, one hour off. About 20 to 30 minutes of walking time per hour, so you're only on it for less than half of the time. You say, well, what's the benefit of having the brace on? Well, part of that is getting your body used to the fact that there's something down here and that information is going to be helpful for you going forward as far as how you balance and how you walk. But I also want to make sure that you don't put it on and feel great about it the first day, hate it the second because now my skin's irritated and broke down on my foot or something isn't, it doesn't feel right and then so I don't use it anymore. So wearing a schedule and that schedule can progress every day. If things are going well, add an hour a day or every other day. Within a week or so, you're wearing the brace all the time without limitation. Second of all is adjustments and modifications. When you first start with a brace, you're putting very little weight on it, but over time, you're gonna be putting a lot more weight on that brace. And when you're putting more weight on it, there's gonna be more pressure on these points around where the brace could rub. So if that occurs, you're saying, hey, I was doing great, but now I have a rub on my skin someplace. That's when we have to immediately get into the orthodist and make adjustments. This is an inanimate object. And as, you, as an animated object, you start doing more and more, the brace may need an adjustment. So don't be afraid to get that done. Instruction also on in and out of the brace. That means a, a patient likely is not gonna wear the brace all the time. They'll wear the brace most of the time, but certainly say in the middle of the night when they get up to go to the bathroom are likely not gonna stop and try to put the brace on, which means when you're walking, you need to understand, I, do I have the brace on? I can depend on it to give me good energy return and give me support, give me whatever I'm looking for for feedback from the device. But when it's not on, I'm at a higher risk for tripping if I try to walk in the same way and I drag my foot. So patients need to understand, you're talking about when you don't have that brace on, you have to think, I don't have my brace on, pick my foot up in case I'm, my foot drags or stabilize or use a walker, use something stabilizing so that I don't trip or fall. So with and without the brace, there are activities. Without the brace, you're doing exercises, things to try to maintain and regain as much motion and control as you can. With the brace, you're walking at, the, at your highest efficiency level. And last thing is this idea of overall progression with the brace. Talk with the patient about, is this something where they're getting better and better, the brace is for right now and over time you won't need it anymore. How do we work on that weaning schedule back to quote unquote normalcy? And the opposite, what about that patient that has got a diagnosis that things are going to get worse over time? All we're trying to do is slow down that de decline. That means the brace may need to be more stabilizing over time. So we have to talk to the patient. How are we gonna do that? How are we gonna keep an eye on that progression? When do we need to make those adjustments? And the last is most more, is more common, is they're gonna utilize this brace, it's gonna benefit them, and it's gonna stay pretty consistent to help them maintain their level of function. If that's the case, then they're gonna, again, get comfortable with the brace, get the most they can out of it, understand how they use it when they're in it, and how they work when they're out of it. All of that creates efficiency to get the best utilization of the brace. So now we're looking at some different AFO styles. Again, both on the how to put them on, but also utilization of, the, of these braces. Remember, when we're talking about carbon fiber and a solid carbon fiber plate, we wanna put something on top of that to pad the person from the device. Now here we have a custom molded orthotic. So quite a bit larger, because we're in a situation where we not only have some uh, control issues with drop foot, but we have really loss of um, control, motor control from the knee down, right? On an inherited neuropathy situation. So it has weakness globally from the knees down or in through the feet. So we need to stabilize that foot with a better insert. And we're using a plate with a, a front plate orthotic, which is gonna give us a lot more lift or vertical lift uh, when the two together, stabilization for the foot, vertical lift when it goes in the shoe. Same time in, in his particular shoe, we have a version here, uh, which is a really interesting shoe that zips open in the back. 
And this is a great little setup as far as getting in and out of the brace uh, with less effort, all right? Well, that's wrestling the shoe into place. And here, what we have, we're gonna slide into that guy into a position where I can open up the back of the shoe and then slide in. So we'll look at that in a second, but I also wanna talk about the second option. And here's a gentleman that's really going from one brace while he's troweling another one and trying to see if he can get a different system to work. And this is a different style of brace in which we, again, we still carbon fiber. Someone could say, well, these are the same. Those are both carbon fiber braces, but they're actually very, very different. This one has a boot built right into it, trying to create stability on the lateral aspect for him, um, but also cupping all the way around that foot. So it no longer needs an insert on the inside because the boot becomes the insert. And then the brace comes all the way up, again, locks the plate closed in the front. So again, transfers all that energy into this upright and gives us a good energy return and a lift component. The problem with something like this is the benefit and the, and, and the drawback is it's custom made, so it wraps and fits very, very tight. But once it's on, there's a lot of risk or places for it to rub and cause irritation. As you can see on here, this is a new brace, but we've already got a number of places where we're adding padding to try to reduce irritation or reduce pressure. And a different style of shoe is a Velcro closure shoe, where you can get a really good opening, but then you still don't have to deal with laces. You take the insert out of the shoe because this boot becomes the insert and the slide in the component to sit in the brace this way. So let's show you when we put this on, the patient, especially we'll start on this first one and stepping into it, he normally steps into the brace with it in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and have you, Ken, just pick that foot up, yep. step right in there and slide forward. Now notice, because we can pull the hole back out of the shoe, it creates a much easier way for him to slide into that brace. From that component, we're gonna simply move that plate back into position and stabilize the Velcro into place. Once he's there, then he can close the shoe up with the zipper around the back. So a simple system to get into place gets it right on top. Now go ahead and take that off for us, Ken. So in this style of brace where you are um, a little bit more rigid, stiffer brace with a boot, a patient is gonna normally don this first and then step into the shoe versus putting the two together and then sliding on. So I'm gonna hand this to Ken and let him put it on. So we also talk with patients about buying shoes that are maybe half size longer and even a width size wider to make sure there's enough room to fit without any impinging or pinching on the toes of the foot all the way inside the shoe. So once he's stabilized in a neutral position, we have a stable surface and we have a locked in plate in the front really creating a full stabilization or upright stabilization of his leg. In this particular case, we're dealing with a articulated AFO and dealing with a patient that has a history of a central nervous system injury. So we have tone concerns on the uh, right side of the body. Why a plastic brace? Why an articulated brace? In his particular case, that's because we have tone issues. That means with tone in this leg, as he is in stance phase, that leg is gonna wanna pop back into hyperextension. And on a brace like this, it allows us to come over the top and keep that tibia or the lower leg moving forward and not forced into hyperextension. That's why we'd use an articulated brace in this case. Understanding why the sides are built all the way the height that they are and where the straps are. So to fit the brace then on the patient, what I wanna do is figure out how the patient is comfortable. If you put plastic directly on someone's skin, sometimes that can be uncomfortable. So I want you to know you can utilize some different devices out here. These are compression socks, again, from just very basic kind of uh, institutional to the higher end, which you'll see in marathon runners. But it's a compression sock that will protect the skin from rubbing on the brace. And also a lot of people with, um, with uh, neurologic issues in the leg will create some edema problems or swelling. So this will create some compression to reduce 
or help keep the swelling down in the leg as he's on it during the day. So compression socks can be beneficial for multiple reasons and they come in all different sizes, types, fashions, lengths, all that. Now, first thing I wanna do with him is get to this point of how do I put this guy on? I'm gonna bring his leg to me. I'm just gonna simply slide him into it. I wanna come here and bring it back to him. Just sliding him into a neutral position. I'm gonna bring this top strap back. This guy is to hold the brace in place. And then the bottom strap can either be around here or sometimes it comes across the foot itself. And that is simply to hold his foot back into the brace. Many times with the tone issues, he's gonna have tone, extensor tone, pressing his toes down. It's gonna to wanna to make the leg push out of the front of the brace. So this puts me into a position where I can see whether he's all the way back in and the strap holds him back into position. The last thing you wanna check is the toes because many times with patients with tone, the toes are gonna to wanna to curl or hammer. And if that's the case, again, that can be very uncomfortable if those toes are hammered back and you try to jam into the shoe. So I like to come in on the brace and make sure we get a good extension of the toes and get, to lush, to lie, get them to lie flush. But before I put the shoe on, what I want to do is I want to stand up and I want to see where the pressures are. Now, what's important to realize though, this is a very slippery brace. So when someone stands up on it, we're carpeting here, but normally in our parallel bars, they're either in hardwood or a towel. So again, very slick surface. So I'm gonna simply put a non-skid surface down underneath his foot so that as he stands up, I can get a sense of where the, the pressure on the brace is going. And what I'm checking for is pressure areas. Where does the foot fit in the brace? Is it pinching anywhere on the outside of his foot, into his arch? Is it long enough? Is the toe plate covering his whole foot or the majority of it? Is he staying back into it? And he looks like he's there. So what we're gonna do is pick up, slide in the front of the foot here, and then kind of work that foot into position. Want to pull that tongue up to make sure I've got as much space sliding forward on the top as well as the bottom. So from there, Ryan, I'd like you to stand up again. There you go. So this time on top of the brace, we have good stabilization. The brace is fitting him well, not cutting in anywhere. Straps are in good shape. The shoe is holding the brace in place. From that point, I have a good sense of the control of the brace. Now, with Ryan, then I simply want to talk to him about before he takes this home, is doing this himself. So in a second, we're going to sit down, take it off, have him put it all back on himself so he knows how to do that. So Ryan, go ahead and have a seat. Ryan has done this before, so I'm going to let him go through the process and show you. Go ahead and take it off. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation, ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash mission gate. Stay up to date on our latest content Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.